Star Wars movies, I loved Rogue One, that was great, but it's probably best just to check out my Skyman Universe channel, because I go kind of more in depth about Star Wars and things, because it is a passion of mine. Um, I really, I liked The Force Awakens when it came out, but after The Last Jedi, I wasn't a massive fan, so I hope that episode 9 will sort of bring it all back. Heather Foxtrot, if you were to pick your favourite trio, what would it be? So mine, I think, would be like snip, 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 So scissors, I think, is my favorite trigger. It always manages to get me, and plus there's so many different scissor types and sounds they all make, so they're all slightly different and different variations. So yeah, those and kind of like the raindrop type things. Like, say, if you're and an umbrella and you got a bit of battery. Oh, raindrops everywhere. That's pretty awesome too. The Lego Shark Productions. Fritz Voice, ASMR, what's your favorite food? Chicken. I do love chicken. And I love that people are vegetarian and vegan, etc. And I wholeheartedly support the, the morals behind it as well. Um, and I feel very contradicting uh, because I love chicken so much but um, for me I've given up pork and uh, I try to do beef but I do like a beef burger um, but I love chicken way too much and if I didn't have chicken if I couldn't feast then I'd uh, waste away but yeah chicken then chocolate Reese Hollis have you tried playing Star Wars on Oculus Quest? It's awesome. Um, I'm not entirely sure what an Oculus 
this quest is. But it sounds awesome. I'll have to look that up. CF Stang, is there any trigger you hate doing yourself? Or ones in other videos you watch that you can't stand? That is a great question. And there is one thing which is... It's one of those things like, you know, when people have something with cotton wool or something, you rub it together. I don't get that, but people, some people really don't like that. Or fabric. Mine, I love brushing, but if you got a toothbrush and then put your thumb on top of, on top of the toothbrush, I mean, shh, ugh, no, that is, that is the one. So, you will never find me in a toothbrush kind of like that, ever, but any other brushing is fine. I think it's like a psychological thing. Spartan S2A4. What main faction in Star Wars? A Star Wars question, that's good. Canon do you find to be the most interesting? And what would you do? Uh, what do you find the dullest and least interesting? Um, in factions, if you mean like classes or something? Um, or the actual trilogies? I assume you mean trilogies. Um, and that would be kind of the Clone wars -y type. Um, I would choose the original. I think it works better for the prequels because, because whatever have it happens in the prequels, you know what happens in the original, so you can use that to create some really in-depth, awesome stories and characters and, and watch them grow, and the prequels did that for me. We know what's going to happen to Anakin Skywalker, that was like the best bit, and to see him sort of gradually have reasons to turn into Darth Vader. And I think the Clone Wars really covered that really well, so that's why I love that. That's my favourite uh, era uh, faction. Uh, least favourite is probably the sort of Resistance uh, First Order type thing, because it's, it's kind of repetitive. And it needed something a little slightly different, like the Clone Wars Stormtroopers, that was all then. Now it should have been something slightly different, but if that's what you meant. Uh, Caroline Eaton. What is your favourite ASMR video that you made so far? Hmm. I think there have been many favourites. So like when I film, sometimes it can be an extremely stressful and type thing where I'm plagued by noises or planes going over, bloopers, technical problems, lighting problems, you name it, I've had it. Um, but many videos where you feel like it's just right, it's done right. And I think it's probably when you do a role play. And I think I really enjoyed doing the Joker, uh, the first one. And that just left a mess absolutely everywhere. In the house, it was paint everywhere. There was hairspray, uh, green hairspray that just was flooded my shower as well. Um, but because I was so particular about getting the props and researching, like Joker mannerisms and things like that. Um, it was really fun to do, so after I filmed that, uh, I think there was kind of a sense of pride, maybe, <laughs> I don't know, um, but I really enjoyed doing it because I tried to stay in character and I, was, I filmed the second Joker video after that as well, which I released like two months after, and I was in character for the Joker for at least four hours of filming, and then getting out of it, I'd like I take acting very seriously for some reason, uh, but to get out of it, it was just in that little joke of voice and uh, those little mannerisms. I thought I'd gone a bit insane, but I was very happy uh, filming that one. My world, I may be wrong, but I gotta know what's your Hogwarts house. I am Slytherin. Oh, yeah, the Slytherin. Um, I think I would be somewhat a little bit Slytherin. There's Slytherin elements, I think, but I think deep down it would be Gryffindor and highly involved with Greenwich. But uh, keep an eye on you, Slytherin. Uh, Finn Flanagan, any chance you do more whispering like you did in the Gregarious Boss interview during Blue Yeti segment? It was marvelous, good sir. Well, hopefully, I'm doing a little bit more whispering there for you now, and it's triggering you. And yet, yeah, always try to. And that sort of switch, I think, 
is kind of like trickery. It goes between the two. Uh, but yeah, thank you, and uh, I'll be sure to do more just pure whispering ones. After all, my original name, Whisper Mister, that was the name. But now it's Red's voice. Um, Billy Garner, what inspired you to make an ASMR channel? Now this is a long story, so let me condense it for you. Um, so I've had my channel for quite some time. Uh, even before it was called ASMR, it was kind of like the whispering community and it was making sort of whispering videos then. Um, and I was sort of looking for videos to, to help me because I was going some uh, tough times uh, back then. And yes, Fred also went through a little bit of tough times as well. Um, but it really helped me. And I was after searching and searching for videos to fall asleep to and just to calm my mind, it's overthinking non-stop all the time. And I came across this sort of whispering thing, and I can't remember for the life of me this girl's name, but there was a girl, I don't think she showed her Facebook, which had her channel on, and a chat called Omni Whisper, and they just made me fall asleep. And I think a lot of this video is even talking about sort of cosmic space things. Was it cosmic something? The original one? I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, they really helped me. Like, more than I could probably say. And it helped me through some incredibly different, difficult times during that period. And the fact that I didn't want anyone else to experience what I experienced. And if I could help someone who was going through a similar point as me, I would. So I started my channel, I thought, I'm going to try it and uh, see where it goes. And, uh, and here we are. So I think that was kind of my reasoning. River Hard 66. I feel like I remember you saying once, you climb, if so, or would you climb it? Hell no, because uh, Fred doesn't climb. Fred does not like heights, which uh, might surprise you. If I'd say I was sailing and I was climbing on some rigging, then that would be holding on for dear life. Um, I've just never liked heights. I'm one of those people who your mind plays tricks on you, so you're high up and you know that you're high up and your brain starts sort of shutting you down and makes your eyes go fuzzy and <laughs> yeah so i don't think i'd be much of a climber i did do a bit of rock climbing one time as in indoor and because i've got a good upper body strength i didn't need to use my feet it was just kind of like swinging my feet around which was pretty cool i enjoyed that uh, Jan K, do you like episode 8? Jan K, come in and check out uh, my Skyman Universe channel in the link below and that will help you see how I feel about Star Wars episode 8. I wasn't too much of a massive fan, it was completely different to what I expected, so let's not get into that now. Okay. See, Seezy, Keezy, or Keys, uh, would you ever do a Lord of Rings? Slash Game of Thrones, slash Elder Scrolls roleplay. I feel like I could make a really convincing Ulfric Stormcloak or Ned Stark. And that's got seven likes, so I've always noticed a, a sort of call for Game of Thrones type thing. And also Skyrim. I thought Elder Scrolls and Skyrim were the same thing, but apologies, I'm really out of touch with that. I watched one episode of Game of Thrones, but I'm such a Lord of the Rings purist lover and I just thought I can't do this I love Lord of the Rings too much and that's my only fantasy medieval type thing um, so I didn't really give it a chance and I heard that season 6 was disappointing or something like that um, so I'm not too fussed about it to be honest but I need to look up Alfred Stormcloak and Ned Stark and see what I can do there uh, but in regards to a Lord of the Rings roleplay uh, Lord of the Rings roleplay is not too early, nor is it late. It arrives precisely when it means to. And I've been trying to get costumes and things sorted for it, so it's coming, don't you worry. A grandma asks, uh, what is my video you're most proud of creating? Um, 
like I said, like the very satisfying one was Joker, one which I was doing. Uh, I was also really proud of that one which kind of blew up and introduced me to a load, uh, more people, which was great. Uh, it was the ultra fast ones uh, where there's no talking and just sounds and quick movements around the microphone that was utilizing like my favorite thing and scissors and haircuts. And I was proud with that because it was proud because you was enjoying it. That's what makes me proud. Um, but I was proud of uh, I just want to go full on makeup and get all the costume and stuff so the genie, the look, eventually once I got it and filmed it like 20 times. That was good, uh, so I was kind of proud of that. Um, but just like, yeah, there are a few that are dotted around, but it's not that I look at my videos afterwards and have like a sense of pride, I just want them to be enjoyed <laughs> and useful. Uh, so, thanks, Derpy Donut. How much time on average does it does thinking up and creating the very small place you film require? Well, Derpy Donut. Um, so, videos can take uh, a varied amount of time, uh, say from the idea, I could come up with an idea, uh, but then it requires planning for it, and say if it's a role play, then even acquiring costumes and getting the right backgrounds and scenario, what you're going to do requires research, so say if it was, for example, like one of my Star Wars one, that Imperial one I was trying to do for uh, May the 5th. Uh, but because of complex costume irregularities where it took months for the costume to get delivered and then it was the wrong size and then to go back and then I had to get the background sorted and finally once it all came together um, then I can start sort of writing a couple of things down uh, the filming process itself it will take a couple of hours to film uh, editing will then be a day to two days um, so if it was just like a a sounds video once I've accumulated the sounds then or the props then I can get to film in and there'll be a day editing afterwards so probably like on a good day four days um, on a complex one maybe two months sometimes um, a week uh, it depends I'm always trying to keep ahead of my schedule so I'm always planning things like now I'm planning things and getting costumes for various things and, and uh, that's for future videos and every time I come up with an idea then those ideas I write down straight away so yeah um, Ergo Blago how did you get the idea of being rude in your ASMR videos now this is a very good very good question kind of like the origins of the rude English gentleman so the rude idea um, I remember in the early days I remember coming across all the role plays, and every role play was really. I'm taking that out. All the role plays are just like the juice in the middle. All the role plays are really friendly and nice, and uh, exceptionally nice, which is very triggery. And uh, that sense of care and attention works, but I was thinking, well, like maybe do the polar opposite of that. And if you did the polar opposite of that, uh, then. The whole idea of like when someone's being nice, it's heightened more because you're used to them being rude. So like this sort of rude character is sort of starting to get born, as it were. And then it's kind of like it's not there to insult you. Like the rude character is there to be laughed at. So you sort of laugh at the rude character because he's so rude. Uh, so I always wanted to keep it like light-hearted and so sort of jokes there but when he actually does something that's trigger worthy it's it's more of a surprise and your brain's not expecting it because he's been rude to you this whole time so it's kind of a heightened i hope to be a heightened asmr experience to give you like that brain surprise uh, for asmr so if someone's been nice they're like oh yeah please have this please have that rude english gentleman's like no no, you look terrible, and you know, I'm not giving you that, and okay, there's that, go and enjoy it. So, hopefully that's like, it's a surprise, to be sure, but a welcome one. Um, so yeah, that's how the idea of rude came in, it's not to just be rude, um, because I wouldn't consider myself a rude person. I had the complete opposite, but I liked the idea of acting it, and 
get into so many role plays which would be the polar opposite of all the nice ones that, that you see about so that was kind of where the idea came from and also um, I think there was a there was a program like in England I can't remember what it was called but it's it had a Johnny Depp in it one time and it was like these suit people and they're like oh suit user oh suit user and that was kind of like intertwined into the root thing and so Luciano Lerman hope I'm pronouncing these names right uh, what is your favorite ASMR experience before discovering such thing existed uh, my favorite ASMR experience um, I think if that's like the first uh, what is your first ASMR experience? Sorry, I thought you said favorite. Uh, my first ASMR experience uh, was when I was a kid, and I will always forever remember it. And I remember going to a shoe shop called Clark's, and this is when I was getting my school shoes fit and stuff. And I remember there was this girl and who worked there, and she was measuring my feet. And I was like, yeah, I'm measuring my feet, yeah. And it's kind of like a thing, that was probably like my first one-on-one -on -one experience when I was a kid, like the one-on-one -on -one thing, like say you had your hair cut, I hated getting my hair cut, probably where this comes from, um, but uh, she would try on the shoes and then when she put the shoes on, she like started pressing all the way around the shoe and then just rubbing her hands along it and sort of squeezing the leather, and I remember just my head as a kid, I was like, what is this? And why am I feeling like this? I could just fall asleep right now. And it was just that tingly feeling literally everywhere. And I just, it was such a strange thing. And I didn't, I didn't isolate it. I just thought it was a thing. You get your shoes uh, fitted and then that would happen. So this place was called Clark's. And so the care and attention that they uh, give with people and when they try and shoes, then yeah, that's good. But you don't really get that now. So uh, yeah, but that I think was my first sort of ASMR experience, which I remember and will never forget um, when I picked it up. So I always enjoyed going to Clark's, getting new school shoes and stuff. So <laughs> yeah, they were good. They were great. Uh, so shout out to Clark's shoe shop. Dylan Urban, Fred's voice ASMR, favorite Star Wars character, Jar Jar Binks. Um, no. uh, there are so many uh, rich characters in Star Wars, it's impossible for me to pick one. Like, if I was to name a bunch which I love, which is probably all of them, would be Obi-Wan Kenobi, hello there, obviously. Um, Han, Luke, Leia, C-3PO, R2-D2, R2-D2 and C-3PO are exceptional favorites. I loved them when I was a kid. Jar Jar Binks, Palpatine, um, Padme. I really had thoughts for Padme when I was younger. Uh, so to isolated Qui Gon Jinn. Uh, I love them all, like even like Captain Bernard things, and, and uh, all these just random characters. Uh, yeah, so I love them all. It's impossible for me to pick one. Uh, so Flugi. Uh, honestly, do you get tired of Thor comments? If not, do they ever annoy you? Love your channel. You were the first S-Martis I watched. That's a great to hear. Um, I never get bored of the Thor comments. Uh, when I was out buying some chicken yes yesterday, uh, this girl really seemed to think I was Thor in real life. And lots of people don't worry. Like, it's not just in the comments. People just say it to me in real life. But I associate it and think that it's people from the ASMR world that that know me and they're saying it so someone's like you look like Thor I'm like is that a Fred is that a Fred someone <laughs> but um no I, I always get intrigued to see how the Thor comments are um the jokes are made uh, so that it's relevant to what's being created and I think they're actually very funny and there's nothing wrong with it saying so you look like a superhero I mean that's very flattering I suppose um so keep those jokey comments Inventive jokey comments. Brody Dillman, favorite Star Wars, The Phantom Menace. Uh, Phantom Menace, because when I was eight, I think, when it came out, um, that was eight years old, was a fun time for me. And I'd already watched Star Wars before that uh, on VHS. Yes. 
on tape and uh, I remember watching that uh, when, with my father and he introduced it to me and it kind of made me scared uh, when I was a kid and Darth Vader used to terrify me um, then I was given all these sort of Star Wars presents for Christmas and things I didn't even know what they were but then after the Phantom Menace we watched that the obsession began uh, so I have about uh, 20, 20 years or 21 years of great Star Wars obsession okay make funny Fred's voice what is your workout routine uh, well, mm, uh, my workout routine <laughs> is uh, at the moment non-existent uh, in all honesty I haven't been to the gym in nearly six months now um, I went away to Tenerife and when I came back I got a heart infection around the stomach the lining around my heart uh, I got an infection and uh, that was very painful and even when I was trying to film during that period um, like I couldn't lift my arms up or anything it was just horrible um, so it wasn't that great and I've tried to get back into training but there could potentially be something else wrong as well so I've been going to the doctor still and still trying to isolate what the problem is and uh, I'll be going in again next week for more tests so in between that time my workout routine has been absolutely zero but you're not asking for that you're asking for what I used to do I'd imagine and what I used to do was uh, low sets uh, heavy weight and uh, a low rep sorry and heavy weight so I'd probably do uh, three to four sets of every exercise and make sure I do about five exercises and condense it all in an hour a lot of supersetting in there as well a workout routine it's like it's big and complicated but because I've been in such a long time uh, I wrote it all down so I'd never forget I can't imagine why I would but if I was to get back into training which is I just <laughs> please um, yeah I've been training consistently for eight years properly and to adjust from going all the time to not going at all is a big adjustment and not only mentally physically but mentally as well uh, so yeah that sucks um, but yeah that's my workout routine uh, Barack H Obama uh, <laughs> what what was your driving force to become an ASMR channel hopefully I just covered that uh, for you but to sum it up is to I think to help people uh, and make them feel better and enjoy themselves. Uh, we live in a crazy, crazy uh, world of high tech, fast things, you expect to do things, and I hope that my ASMR videos are that personal time which you can have and enjoy yourself and hopefully help you feel good and interact with me and whatever you say. That's kind of what you're for us, maybe. Baha Meslub, if that's how you pronounce it, uh, when did you start going to the gym? Uh, so when I started going to the gym, like probably was uh, eight years ago, so in about 2011, that was when I started joining the gyms. Um, but before that, I always had an uh, interest in fitness when I was younger. My father he used to do a lot of workouts with a pole and he used to put it on, uh, on chairs and then do upright stuff and what have you uh, so I sort of took it to the next thing uh, when I was kind of old enough and my goal was to just be able to do one press up when I was 17 I just could not do a press up and it came to that point when I was 18 and when I was at university uh, I was like right by the end of the year I want to be able to do a press up and be able to do it perfectly fine so from struggling and pushing every single night and then gradually gradually uh, it came to the end of the year and I was doing 200 reps of press ups and because I was doing them so well quickly uh, about three or four times a week every night um, then I started doing about three sets of that or possibly four as well of 200 reps and I was just doing press up after press up and I was very proud of that but obviously just sort of had a bit of a chest and nothing else so uh, yeah so I started kind of in 2011 when it's got varied to different weights and things Damon Wolf, what's your favorite sitcom 
uh, my favourite sitcom? This is a very good question. I don't really watch television. And if you mean sitcoms like uh, this Friends, like a sitcom or something like that. Uh, but recently, uh, I started to watch uh, Friends, uh, Two and a Half Men. Uh, these are the ones I've covered like in the last two years. Um, How I Met Your Mother and currently on The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Uh, so, in terms of sort of series, I think they're sort of sitcoms, maybe. I'm not sure. Like my favorite series, which I've watched, was Lost. I love Lost, and I've recently watched it all again. Uh, first time in I don't know how long, and I still love it. Um, but that's the counts as a sitcom, so I think probably I really enjoy it. Uh, when Charlie Sheen was in it, um, and also Friends, I love Friends as well. Uh, How many of my bad good things in it, and Fresh Prince has got a lot of funny things in it now. So, yeah, <laughs> a very varied selection. Oh, uh, sitcom and uh, Dad's Army as well, if anyone's heard of it. Uh, I love Dad's Army. Uh, so, that's kind of like the older person to be. Uh, Justin Reynolds, what is your favourite beer style? For example, mine is Lagers or Ales, not IPA guy at all. Oh, and you should do an ASMR shoe collection soon as well. Uh, my shoe collection is like in a pile. It's just a big pile of shoes. And uh, yeah, so maybe I could do something like that. And that could be kind of cool. In fact, I think I could do something like that. So I'll try and do that for you, Justin. Uh, considering it would be thank Clarks, mighty Clarks, for introducing me to ASMR. Praise be to Clarks. And um, yeah, so my favorite beer style. Uh, I don't really drink beer like once in a blue moon, uh, like any alcohol. Uh, but sometimes I always get the taste for for a nice beer when it's hot or something. The, th the throth, yeah, throth, yeah, the better. Um, but I'm very partial to cider as well. Uh, but the acidity in my stomach at the moment is not great. So. Yeah. Danny Bowen. Have you ever regretted making a video? Oh, hell yes, absolutely. I mean, probably about 10% of my video creations, 10% of them, uh, don't make it online because I'm just, for whatever reason, like you know instantly if you're gonna like it or not. Um, like just the style, the look, lighting, sounds are off, or something just doesn't work. Uh, you are indeed your own worst critic. So, whatever reason, there's something I don't like it, and I just think that's not going on there. Um, the most recent one, I think, uh, was when I, I did the genie one, however many times. Uh, the, but the first time I did it, I was just trying to get it and make it work, um, and it just didn't work. And I was like, the frustrating, so I asked everyone on Instagram, and then you know, sort of mixed opinions, and I was like, I'm gonna do this, and then just started recording. One and then it sort of came out as the rude English genie and it just worked, I think. So I was like, Yeah, that was that was good. So, yeah, there was many regretting ones, and plus, like, literally everyone in my life. The main reason for me, I always kept ASMR music, it was a private thing for me because it helped me. It always has that sort of sacred space uh, where I don't want it to be touched or spoiled. Um, but then everyone starts to find it in real life and then I find when I know someone's watching my videos who's not say into ASMR it sort of hinders my creative process so if that makes sense um, so yeah like things like that there's kind of that heightened sense of um, should I really be doing this one but then I just think I don't care <laughs> I'll just make it anyway uh, so yeah the Gamer 681. At what point did it occur to you that you wanted to become an ASMR creator and what do you experience? Uh, and do you experience ASMR yourself? Uh, so hopefully I'll cover that for you a little bit earlier on. Uh, helping, helping, promoting goodness to people. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's sort of that. Um, I didn't experience, I didn't know what ASMR was. Like the tingles, I separated that from the whole clock's shoe experience when I was a kid, but um, but now, uh, yeah, I've very much experienced it. So I'm very aware of uh, tingles and things, and especially in real life when people do something, or say so if I'm in the tea shop and someone's gift wrapping it, gift wrapping it, and putting it in wrapping paper, and I'm sort of looking there like, just 
please keep wrapping that. Please, yeah, and just I'll buy this and wrap that up as well. So I sort of binge a little bit. So yeah, I do experience it uh, myself. Uh, but sometimes when I was filming, like I couldn't, uh, I didn't, I couldn't trigger myself. But then occasionally it started to happen, like when I was editing, and there would be a trigger. I'd be like, oh, that was actually quite good. A confetti head gore. Uh, do you believe in Darth Jar Jar theory? I just read about it. I just read about it the other day, and clues backing up to the theory where most intrigue, and the clues backing up the theory where most intrigue. Um, yes. I believe in Darth Jar Jar. I mean, it's got to be the sinister thing with Jar Jar Banks. I mean, if you think about it, uh, Jar Jar was the person who created the clones and sent the Galaga. Well, not created, but gave emergency powers to Palpatine. And he was the one that transferred that power, which apparently would have stopped if he was there, to Palpatine and sent the, the Republic into galactic uh, civil war. But at the same time, would they have let the droids just start attacking planets? I don't think so. The clones would have came anyway, or some form of army that people would have band together. Uh, but I think because it was the clones, and the clones turned into stormtroopers eventually, and Jar Jar Binks initiated that, uh, you've got to ask yourself some serious questions. You know, he could backflip, he could do force jumps, uh, like he comes across this bumbling character uh, that annoys everyone, but that's the real secret of Darth Jar Jar the wise I don't, I'd like to think they would, I would actually love it that was the twist that it was Jar Jar Pings because I love Jar Jar I don't get why people don't really like him but then again I grew up with him uh, one uh, Ryan Adler one would you consider an ASMR club and if so with whom uh, two have you ever would you ever do a James Bond Robin Hood Henry VIII or Sherlock Holmes preferably in the rude English gentleman style I'd love to see that I think well two questions um, but yeah I would love to do all of those role plays uh, maybe in the rude thing as well I think James Bond I love the James Bond um, Skyfall is my favourite and uh, I really like the Pierce Bros and James Bond and, and also Sean Connery um, which money penny and yeah so I think I did a sort of gadget thing but I don't know if it's on my channel anymore like years ago um, but a Robin Hood would be pretty awesome with a bow and stuff and still from the rich and poor and give to himself Henry VIII like I have an interest in the medieval thing but doing a Tudor thing could be quite cool with like eating or something and Sherlock Holmes solving mysteries that you can't get or something like that that would be cool uh, in terms of collaboration, sure, I would like to collab with uh, everyone and uh, invite them around and uh, do a film, filming session or something. Everyone is welcome. Uh, Claire Grace, does it ever feel weird to you to be a male as an artist? I've noticed it's a very female saturated genre. And how do you feel about the sexualization of you and your videos constantly seeing comments of how hot you are or whatever? Does it get uncomfortable? And congrats, by the way. Um, to be honest, this sexualization thing, I've never really, never really seen it. Um, but maybe you have, I don't know. Um, but that's very gracious of people to say those things. <laughs> um, some respect yeah you can get it's like a female saturated genre um i think perhaps it's maybe that caring nature which might be associated more with uh, women but <laughs> yeah, who, who could say um but it doesn't feel with me to be a man as smart as i think the main thing is is asmr i'd like to think that like I'm completely different from other people and everyone has their own thing, everyone's different so it just shows that ASMR could be for everyone anyone who could be affected by ASMR can do ASMR and yeah it just shows ASMR has touched people in all walks of life and I think that's what's great about it so I don't think I feel weird about it uh, I feel kind of privileged to be honest Chicken Permission and that's a pretty great name. Uh, are you sure you're not Obi-Wan? You just took refuge here and blesses this planet with your beautiful creativity and art. Um, I love Obi-Wan. I'd like to think I was Obi-Wan, um, but I don't think I am Obi-Wan. 
so yeah but thank you uh, phoenix right uh, do thor comments ever get ever get the tiring uh, like i said they're just funny uh, luke chris which form of lightsaber dueling would you utilize the most if you were jedi or sith as the answers would differ uh but yeah of course i'd be a jedi but i think there would be moments where if something really got on my nerves and uh, the sith would uh, appear but it would be controlled and so it'll have those sort of anakin skywalker moments or something um, it would be a jedi and if you mean like in forms of dueling uh, like um, lightsaber forms uh, i can't remember which type but i'd be sort of master of defense i think maybe and focus and uh, mud kip master you probably get this a lot but what is your favorite star wars movie uh, like i said phantom menace is my favorite star wars movie and i will never forget it when i was a kid um, it's not a real movie but uh, everything around it as well uh, but that was a very happy time and just the music really made an impact in how i enjoy music and stuff so and that leads us nicely on to Christopher Herringer. Herringer, uh, what's your favourite band slash musician? So, I think I probably listen to classical music and film soundtracks. Because that's just... Can't put some, I would never listen to the radio because I just can't stand it. Um, as in, like, bonking music and things. Um, but yeah, I mean, there are things which I do like, but... Um, if I was to pick my favourite bands, then it would be Red Hot Chili Peppers and Fly With The Concords, my favourite New Zealand um, band. Um, but yeah, like in terms of composers and film music, there's John Williams, Hans Zimmer, Daniel Hoffman and uh, James Horner, the list goes on. Uh, what's your favourite ride slash restaurant slash snack slash memory in Disneyland Paris? That's from Jordan Catalan. Uh, there are so many great memories at uh, Disneyland. I've been twice now. Second one's yet still got on my channel, uh, Night Adventures. And that was a great second time as well. But the first time I went, I didn't think I would feel like any of the magic. And I thought it was for kids. Uh, but it's one of those things I wanted to take up the list. But when I was there and like I experienced the parades and like it was just happy. So you want to feel good and just feel happy. Then yeah, uh, it was kind of the parade sort of thing. The second time we went, it was kind of magical because usually the Thunder Mountain, I think that's probably my favorite ride, the big Thunder Mountain. And everyone was queuing up there the first time I went, we queued up for an hour. Then the road, the ride closed just as soon as uh, we got to it. And Tom Hardy was there as well. And I remember just standing there looking at him thinking, that guy looks like Tom Hardy. And that was it. And then I saw it later on um, that Tom Hardy was at Disneyland Paris taking pictures and stuff. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Uh, but so this time and the first time when they didn't have a Paris Caribbean ride open, but the second time they did, and we binged that so much, my wife and I. Um, so yes, yeah, very many happy memories on there. And when the fireworks but were starting to begin and they were closing everything down and sort of closed the routes. Um, I heard Thunder Mountain train go round whistling and uh, a couple of people screaming I was like let's see if it's open so we ran down there and it, we just went straight on and ran through the queue straight on we didn't queue up at all it's like one of the last rides uh, so we went round and uh, yeah it was really magical because when we was going up the top of Thunder Mountain we, the fireworks just started going off it was so great and those sort of magical moments and atmospheric was really cool uh, previous time we did the same but with Indiana Jones ride but I think the G-Force didn't agree with me in the loop the second time around and started getting like pains in my arm which mostly wasn't good so I sort of stopped doing that uh, but I really enjoyed the rock and roller coaster as well that's cool uh, Nathan Raymond uh, you should do a part two with information extraction um, I'm not sure what video information extraction is uh, if it's like a I don't know but I'll look into it. Uh, Game Trooper Fly. From a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you hate sand? Oh, 10. You know, sand is just coarse. It's rough. It's irritating. And it gets everywhere. But not like, yeah, 
everything's soft and smooth. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I love sand. Sand is great. Uh, well, I like sort of hard sand. So you know, you, when you're at the beach and you've got like the really sandy sand, and then you've got sort of slightly wet sand, and then it's the wet sand where the tides come in. I like it in between, so all the sand doesn't get in your food when you're eating. Uh, Andrew Cloud, what's your workout routine? Uh, a lot of people asking the workout routine. Maybe I might do a video just focusing purely on what I do. Um, but like so if I was eating, um, then for my workouts, I'll always eat dinner and then go to the gym and use that energy for dinner for the gym. Um, but I haven't been to the gym in a long time. Uh, but it would, like I said, condense it all in in an hour. Do legs Monday, chest Tuesday. Uh, arms the following day, and then either chest, uh, back, or shoulders afterwards. But, um, yeah, it started going from like five times a week to four times, and then suddenly it went down and down. Um, but yeah, that was, um, I think on the Mondays I would do legs, uh, because I wouldn't be doing chest, so it would be like, you know, mixed it up. And a surprise a game show 200 a surprise to be sure but a welcome one uh, but in all honesty uh, did you already own the suit or did you buy it for this occasion uh, do you mean the suit that I was wearing and is that a quote from something or do you mean the costume that I was wearing anything um, I bought it for the video that's what you meant like all my costumes I just buy it for the videos if that's what you mean I don't know. Brian, I won't try and pronounce that. Um, w L or Dagrid. I, I won't. Oh, Fred, what is your favourite cosplay that you have done? Uh, I think my favourite. I didn't have like uh, a 501 approved Jedi costume, and I think one of you lovely people bought me a Jedi costume, and when he came through, uh, as he bought it as a gift, which is exceptionally kind when it came through. Um, I was like, oh my goodness, I've waited my whole life for this Jedi costume. And I put it on, looked in the mirror, I was like, it feels so good. And I won't forget that feeling. Um, I would like to get a full-on Anakin Skywalker Revenge of the Sith costume. Maybe actually cosplay it. And I'm already a member of the 501st. Um, my father is a Darth Vader. Emboss tries back Darth Vader, um, but uh, yeah, I'd like to do like an Anakin Skywalker or something like that, maybe Jango Fed, um, or just a proper Imperial uh, Admiral or something, and uh, yeah, and go out in troops because it's not only the Star Wars thing, it's not the enjoyment of the cosplay, but also um, you can you're doing something good, you're raising money for a cause, and like every time I see them, uh, like always pop money in the tin and what have you because it is a good cause it's fun but it's also helping people Gerard Romney do you ever have do you have any food allergies or dietary restrictions not that I know of yet but I feel like it's all about to change um, so yeah I think um, food allergies I don't think I really have any uh, love is mystical except that I hate cheese uh, love is mystical asks where would you like to travel that you haven't yet what is what is something about you outside of what we see on your channel that most viewers wouldn't suspect? What is something you're passionate about apart from the obvious? Um, so I think, like, something you wouldn't suspect, I don't really have a clue. Like, I think what you see is what you get. Um, apart from perhaps might have a little bit of a snap's temper, like that dog that's barking now. But, yeah, I think, I mean, do you mean in something that you see uh, I'm not sure uh, say if it's a fact or something uh, I run really high temperature like I'm always hot and I love wearing shorts and things and uh, yeah even when I'm filming I get exceptionally hot in my studio uh, so if I'm like wearing a shirt and tie I'd invariably just wear my boxer shorts underwear if that's something that you want to know <laughs> I don't know but you can almost guarantee that uh, yeah I'll be trying to keep as cool as possible uh, but it never has any effect on so uh, where would I like to travel to second question 
um, Hawaii and New Zealand are kind of top of my list. Perhaps the Caribbean, St. Lucia. Uh, oops, sorry, I asked Coke or Pepsi? And I answer Pepsi, Diet Pepsi. Um, Paul Madison. What was it that drew you to ASMR in the first place and what made you want to become a content creator? Thanks for what you do. Honestly, you were one of my favorite channels. I was never the biggest Star Wars fan, but I really appreciate how uh, you work it into every video in some small way. Uh, yeah, to all of people like uh, Paul Anderson who are not Star Wars fans, uh, yeah, I love Star Wars as much as I love ASMR, so yeah, apologies if I put too much in there. Um, but I love just movie type things, um, and I like going to cinema and things, and Star Wars is the top. Um, but uh, thank you very much for your comment, that's a very kind of you to say. And yeah, what drew me to ASMR, like I said, is the thing of helping people and, and making sure, just more hoping that people don't go through what maybe I went through when I, when I was younger. I think that was kind of my main thing. And it's just to promote kindness and um, respect and just happy feelings out to people. Uh, I think that's kind of my drive. Oh my goodness, don't do that. Okay. Ben Jones asks, Fred, what's your favorite type of ASMR video? And which type do you like creating the most? My favorite type, I think, like I said before, it would be with uh, like scissors and snips, 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 which are my favorite triggers in there, but you can create all sorts of sounds in there depending on what type of haircut you're doing. Like even if you use a hairdryer and you turn the volume down in editing, uh, it still kind of has a tingly film. Uh, so I think that's kind of like my favorite to make and create, but also love creating the Star Wars ones. I think the joke ones still really uh, enjoy it. I don't know, I just, I do enjoy it doing all of them, uh, and you've seen how it comes out. I think that's, that's the one. Uh, Richard rocks. how'd you keep your beard and hair so godlike? <laughs> that's exceptionally kind of you, and I uh, appreciate you to feel that way. Um, but I don't know what people see in my hair. Like, I'm not one for, let's say, more of a generic short haircut. Uh, I've always liked long hair, if that's something to do with Lord of the Rings, a medieval thing, perhaps campaign, I'm not sure. Maybe Anakin Skywalker, when I was about 16, I liked that uh, look. Um, but then the beard is sort of homage to I always wanted to be like with one Kenobi, and uh, it's stuck like that. Um, but thank you, I've never really thought I've had the best hair. In fact, it's, uh, I think it's complete opposite. <laughs> Uh, Zierton Mimic, if that's how you pronounce it, Zierton. Have you ever considered doing a Sherlock Holmes in a rude English gentleman fashion? That's strange that uh, we kind of had that. Um, but a lot of Sherlock Holmes fans. I could see you in a classic Holmes outfit with tobacco pipes solving a crime, subtly insulting others for not seeing obvious claws. Clearly, you and I are on the same wavelength there, and we sort of just came up with that idea. Uh, yeah, I'll consider doing it. I never watched. Um, Smaug, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, Sherlock Holmes in the BBC, uh, but I was a big fan of um, Basil Rathbone, Sherlock Holmes, like the old one, and um, and Robert Downey Jr. and Jude Law. Uh, the relationship there was very interesting, and the star I thought was really cool. So I'd like to be able to sort of have this all dressed up thing, do my own take. Two questions. Who was the first ASM artist you watched and slash subscribed to? Um, so the first ASM artist that I watched, like I can't remember their name, it might have been Cosmic something, but I could be completely wrong. And a chap called Omni Whisper, but there were so many sort of back that in that time. Um, and uh, there was a girl called Violet's Voice, which I really enjoyed as well. I don't think she makes videos anymore, and I don't think Omni, well, I don't think any of them do. Oh, which is a shame. And there was another chap who could have been bearded something, but he was really cool as well. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that was like, I don't know how many years ago. And second question, how does it feel to have so many subscribers and viewers you who enjoy you and your 
content that supports you and love to see your channel grow and witness you also enjoying its growth. It makes us all very happy to see you so ecstatic to be making this content content we all enjoy. Keep it up, you magnificent man, nothing but love from us in the comments. That's exceptionally uh, kind of you to say that and uh, it, it just I really appreciate it and uh, what you said there. Um, yeah, it just makes me feel good. The interaction and like I love, I think one of my favorite things is after I put a video like that night, I'd be reading your comments and then the next day as well, I just enjoy going through them all and just seeing what you have to say. And, uh, yeah. So, Victor's oof. Victor's oof, shall I say. A Fritz voice as well. What made you want to start a channel for as well? So hopefully I've <laughs> really covered that already. Uh, yeah, but like I said, yeah for helping people and um, yeah just promote goodness uh, right son I think it's also as well like you can see all the big companies now starting to take notice of it and to think where it was years ago and then is it like now it's all gone to this massive mainstream thing which is just completely awesome uh, and this again I saw some, like I think it was LG that turned in, had a setting on their phone in that uh, call it the ASMR setting, which is awesome. Uh, so it's like this rec recognition and things is just really cool. Uh, Rice Sam, if you had, if you had never started YouTube channel, <laughs> what would you be doing? Uh, so that's a very good question. Um, I think probably something to do with uh, media studies or something along those lines. Um, I think acting is very appealing for me. Uh, or I'd probably be working in a library, somewhere, a museum, somewhere, uh, talking about medieval things or something along those lines. Uh, yeah, a bit of a contrast. Um, K, Jordan, or maybe sailing, I'm not sure. Uh, Fred's voice ASMR. Uh, what got you into ASMR and what investments does need to make? Uh, does you need to make? Uh, so investments, there's like so many things that it's just for part of the video creating process that you need to invest in like microphones and cameras and wires tripods lighting recorders uh, just all manner of things but once you start to get what you need that you feel is going to work for you then then it starts to come together but it's just kind of like a gradual thing like you notice things and that's how you try i try to improve like continuously upgrade equipment the best that I can do. Uh, Christy Alley, how tall are you and how did you meet your wife? Uh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, a lot of people ask how tall I am. It's like a, quite a recurring thing. Uh, six foot, six foot one uh, is what I got measured up recently when I was at the doctor's. Um, but I wouldn't say that I'm tall. I'd sound very, like, just maybe just a good, good height, six foot. I'm like slouchy and, uh, and yeah, not feeling really good. And how did I meet my wife? Uh, I met my wife uh, four four years ago, and um, yeah, we've been married uh, for two years. Uh, but where is that? Like a what's your mother's maiden name? Question, a security question. So uh, yeah, that we we met at quite uh, a place where we was meant to meet and. Uh, was introduced in a very uh, unconventional manner and it just it's just funny how it came together um, and uh, yeah I think yeah I probably have uh, her brother to thank for introducing me to her so yeah Shika88 Fred's voice is my first a huge congratulations on crossing the 500,000 mark you truly deserve it that's exceptionally kind you'd say Oh my goodness, this is a long one. All right, I will read all this. Um, as for questions, I'll probably ask what made you want to start your own ASMR channel on YouTube. A lot of ASMRs talk about how ASMR helped them and it was about giving back to the community. So yeah, kind of along those lines. Um, I feel like that's you, but also feel like you like the idea of acting and taking on different roles, especially those Star Wars roles. Yeah, like you're absolutely right there, Shika. Um, yeah, like I love acting, so uh, yeah. Another question would be a lot of questions in there. We want one. Um, 
Yeah, another question would be where did the rude English gentleman come from? Considering the insult this and takes place in market us all. We all still really enjoy the videos and find them amusing to still relax. That's a hard line straight, but you found a way to induce that character to make it work in such a positive way. So like I said, that's really kind of you so uh, but that rude English gentleman thing. Like I was very skeptical whether that rudeness would would sort of intertwine well with ASMR so I always want just to keep it amusing thing and so it's very easy to sort of almost pity the rude English gentleman because to that person to him like that is life that's how you speak to people and there are classes but really it's just no uh, so yeah and lastly have you ever done uh, any acting outside these videos uh, someone in your comments a long time ago said that you were a stunt guy for Thor but to this day I don't know if that's true or not no, I haven't seen the picture if they're not uh, if this is your first acting job I'm extremely impressed and think you would find success in other acting roles for sure uh, so yeah I think quite a lot of people know that I had probably been in uh, a couple of movies um, I think I randomly ended up auditioning for a film called Chilean Fever um, I'd like I thought about doing a video about this just talking about my experiences uh, because I have <laughs> had some really good stories and uh, great fun uh, doing them as well like just crazy experiences um, but if that's something you're interested in then sure I'll be very happy to do it um, but the first thing I did uh, so it was a film called Juliet Fever there was this massive party scene and everyone was dressed up and it was Amsterdam dressed up in like uh, 17th century type things I think or 18th century I can't remember and um, yeah so I basically was working with Zach Galifianakis you know the hangover guy and he looked like the hangover guy with his beard still so that was awesome that was my first thing so I had him like up on my shoulder and it was a party thing and I was a point drink into his mouth and chucking drink and or beer all over him and then like getting to eat one of the tulips and in the film none of that scene like just i can't imagine like how long and amount of people they had there that went on to set that day and then none of that scene was on there and that's happened quite continuously like the films that i've had in that i've been in um that i've had just small minor roles and i wouldn't say anything big uh, with like two lines um but it was just the experience of me like which what i will treasure all the ones I've been on, and all the people I've met as well, I've met, met quite a lot of good friends on there. Um, one of them was Transformers at the last night, um, and that was like intensive and just you were transformed. What I loved about it is because uh, I like picking the ones that interest me the most, like the period ones, and this was like the medieval section, and that. The, it was like a flashback scene so I was treated like some like main cast you know and had someone driving me around and things it was crazy and um, like people kept coming up and saying hello and uh, and when I was doing that I like had intensive horse riding lessons for two weeks up at Milton Keynes I was getting picked up for and taken to um, yeah it was just everything was epic about it but then like in the scene it's so condensed and in the movie, like, there were some wicked shots, I thought, where, like, Michael Bay was in uh, a truck, pickup truck, and he had the camera on it, and I was cantering on my horse, like, with the rest of the, they saw sort of King Arthur in lights, we all got along, and the cameras were right in front of me, I'm like, this is gonna be epic, like, and the thing is, I don't say anything, because if you found me, then that's great, and that, that would be a cool surprise thing, it's nothing that I'd think, oh yeah, I've been in such and such, it's just like a, an enjoyable thing um, but yeah so that was like there's a lot of time early mornings so like four o'clock in the morning till 11 o'clock wrap up at night and things so the days are long and they can be like that every single day uh, but when I watched the film a lot of my scenes in there were kind of, but like you could kind of see me in one bit uh, same one of the lines which was no sacrifice no victory into brothers old and to brothers new or something um, so there was that King Arthur one had the same a terrible wicked experience but none of nothing I mean I had that film flopped but none of my lines or scenes was, was in it 
um, and I've been taken up to Wales and everything, it was crazy, so it just makes you think, like, how much uh, actually gets cut and things, and, but it's not about me, because my rules are minute, but yeah, so that's my acting thing, if anyone was interested, uh, I've got a lot, a lot of stories uh, to talk about it, I don't know what I'm trying to do this week. On a personal note, I just wanted to say thank you. The last few years have been the worst I've experienced, and most nights are physically painful and full of anxiety and panic attacks. I regularly come to you for your calming voice and entertaining manner, and being completely honest. I don't know if it's been able to get this far without help from people like you. What you do makes a real difference to people's lives, and I'm a firm believer of if someone makes a difference in your life in any way, you tell them. It could just be the thing they need to hear that day. Thank you, Fred, truly. And you are the prime example of, like, what I love about doing this. And uh, that's, I mean, it takes a lot for people to open up and things. So, like, I really appreciate that. That's very kind. And I'm sorry to hear that you and whoever else has been going through tough times. Um, so I hope videos continue to help you. Thank you for your comment. Uh, Isaac Lopez, uh, what country would you like to visit and live in for a while? I'd live for a while, be Hawaii. Um, like I said, and New Zealand, I'd love to live like in the Rohan area. No, I don't know. And they're kind of somewhere in the United States, maybe, just for a little bit. Uh, Mag Team Raffi, or whatever that is. <laughs> uh, do you prefer DC Universe or Marvel Universe? A very good and intriguing question. Um, like, I loved Tobey Maguire Spider Man. That was like my favorite Marvel uh, superhero thing, but I really enjoyed Thor Ragnarok. That started to change my opinion more Marvel. I enjoyed the Avengers as well before, I like Age of Ultron and the Avengers as well. They were really cool. Um, but also loved The Dark Knight, and I trained to the Batman uh, music, and that was my inspiration for training a lot of it. Uh, and I really enjoyed Batman vs Superman. The take on Batman was really different, but I enjoyed the bat flick, and I don't get why people really don't like that film as much, because I thought it was actually quite enjoyable. Um, but yeah, then they sort of adopted the jokes, and I don't think it worked as much, maybe, but I don't know. I think there's going to be a new Batman, uh, Cedric Diggory, uh, so that would be quite interesting. Uh, but in terms of what I prefer, I mean, DC's got Joker, Marvel's got Spider-Man, kind of, now, or was that Sony? Uh, but I would love to see more uh, Sam Raimi, who directed Spider-Man. Um, Tony McGuire, I'd love to see an older version, what he's up to now. That'd be cool. There's something which was really romantic about those Spider-Man movies. I was about 17, 18 when they came out, and uh, it was like really sort of magical in New York, or I was younger as well, actually. And they captured like this romantic New York look. And I think it paid off really well. And it, it gave you the feels like those Spider Man movies gave me the feels and make me feel in it. But the new Spider Man is more sort of jokey and I think it's probably um, more similar to the comics. But um, but I preferred like when the web just came out of his wrist and made it more like a spider. Uh, so I don't know. It's a tough one. Maybe Marvel. Maybe it is. Uh, Brandon Frost. Are oh, you thought? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm afraid. Uh, Imogen Davis. What's your favorite thing about the ASMR community? I think it's just everyone in it. Uh, everyone who enjoys it. Uh, I'm simply touched when like, I meet people as well. And I could be anywhere in the world. Like, away on holiday, different countries, going to Disneyland. Like in the, in the hotels, I met, remember I met someone then. It's usually nice, like if I go shopping, and like sometimes people tell me their stories and stuff. So I always make sure I have time to make time for you. Uh, so I think it's just the people, the creativity. Um, yeah, I think it's just nice to see all these people with a common interest, feeling good. I want it, Dingles. Caleb, Callum, nineteen eight. Caleb. Uh, hey Fred, I've been a subscriber since 2012-ish, well, that's a long time. Uh, I'm so delighted you finally hit the 500k, it's been a long overdue. My question for you is will you ever re-upload your personal shop or roleplay and any older videos, or are they permanently deleted? So I have all my old videos, they are somewhere. 
uh, whether it be in like an old computer or something, um, where they'll be uploaded. Like, you know, like you are your own worst critic. Uh, so if I've made something uh, and if I didn't like it, then I'd just be sort of looking at it and it'd be agitating me and I think I could do better. So a personal shopper might be something which uh, I could redo. And uh, hopefully that you have enjoyed that one as well. I'll try and do it in the same style. Um, but yes, yeah, things, your channel changes and evolves into something, then yeah, older videos are just like, I don't really want to watch them. Uh, Logan Hutchins. Are you indeed a rebel spy? A rebel spy? That's my question. I'm not. But many Bothans die to give me that information. Uh, Logan Hutchins again, are you thought I'm not? Um, Kidda Z, out of all your ASMR videos that you made, which one was the most fun to make? By the way, I love your videos, bro. Thank you very much. Uh, the most fun to make, like I said, uh, the ple most pleasing was the Joker. I really enjoyed the Thor one as well. The sort of drunk Thor, I, tr I thought the concept of that could be quite funny after Infinity War. Um, yeah, I think I just... I have fun with all of them in their own different ways as personally I think yeah that was really good and funny but I think the Joker just because I was happy that I managed to make it through without trying to break character that was um yeah kind of fun uh, like I said I enjoy acting and stuff so I think that's the, the thing that I enjoy the most uh Litty Fitty I think that's it or Fighting um or Lighty Fighting being a new Star Wars trailer. Uh, let's say I'm intrigued uh, what or where they go with it and what happens um, and how they go about doing it. Uh, but whether it's the right choice, we'll see. Um, how do you become so humble, Sir Fred? Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say that I'm, I'm humble, but it's very nice of you to say that. Um, but yeah, maybe that was a humble saying, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I've just Always, I like to think what you see is kind of what you get. Um, so yeah, thank you. Bangle for the win. Fred, are you secretly thought everyone keeps secretly answering? I'll secretly keep it a secret. Uh, Jack Chong, how many days do you go to the gym in a week? So I used to go, um, but when I first started training when I was younger, I used to go five times a week, possibly six, sometimes even seven days. But the exhaustion sets in um, but then it started getting smaller to four then to three I think it was kind of three on average so it'd always be legs chest and then something else to play around with maybe triceps maybe biceps maybe shoulders maybe back um, but then some days it was two times a week and that was bad but now I just wish that I'd have two times a week uh, but it's whatever suits you right like whatever you you feel good with and what you've got time for and what you're working towards um, but I think quite a lot start to begin with to sort of get you into it and then sort of then it could start separating a little bit as you sort of maintain um, Davis JRC hello there General Kenobi Lucky boy, what is it like to always be associated, associated with Thor? I mean, it must. It's complimentary, I suppose. <laughs> so as long as people think Thor's a nice person, then that's good. Uh, Hayu Hakush... Sh I, sorry, I cannot pronounce that. But, uh, is there any backstory or law behind the ruling English gentleman slash gracious gentleman? Are they in some sort of secret society? Or maybe there are two societies fighting with each other. Uh, so I think that's a pretty cool question. Um, so my idea is like the origins of the rude English gentleman is that there's like this place, uh, kind of, you know, like in Hot Fuzz, if you've ever seen that movie, and there's like everyone seems to be nice and perfect, but they're actually all part of the secret evil society, and they're horrible. But uh, I still see this rude English gentleman like village, and it's very sort of keep themselves to themselves and they all talk to each other and communicate and, uh, and sort of work with one another and 
they all have their different shops and different things they do and they all expect this upper class thing and they want to just remain in that society but amongst that those people they're dotted around some gracious gentlemen who who are sort of recognized that the rude people are just rude and sort of laugh them off in a way so uh, yeah there's a like a variety but they're all in the same area uh, it's like their own little world so it's like a rude English gentleman land. Uh, fun with Eamon. Uh, what sort of books do you enjoy? Would you consider writing one? Uh, in terms of considering writing one, uh, I'll tell you a little story. Uh, for my Skyman Universe video, I'm obviously a massive Star Wars fan. I wrote a synopsis, like a fan fiction for Kenobi, which I'm still currently doing, which I sort of started last year. I wanted it out for Christmas last year. Uh, there was a kind person who was working with me for uh, doing the art through it as well uh, but I think I need like a lot of art to sort of bring this vision to life so if there's any conceptual artist or someone you can do storyboards and email me and uh, I'll send you through the audio but basically I wrote this synopsis for kind of moving containing all the things I think would be epic and what I wouldn't want to see in a Kenobi movie um, and I was so happy with it I thought, well, I'll just send this Lucasfilm for a laugh, you know, and see what happens. And, like, within a week, I didn't expect it at all. And they actually contacted me back and was like, thank you, like, so much for sending this. Uh, but unfortunately, because I'm not part of the story group, like, they can't use anything uh, because that makes my original ideas stolen or something along those lines. But I was just over the moon that Lucasfilm message back. I just thought it was so awesome. And so I was very happy with that, but what I was going to do was turn that video into four videos because it's so long, it's like two hours long, or an hour and a half, uh, going through all the story things, but I'm just doing one video, so I'm still working on that, um, but if they want artists or anything want to be involved in that, comic book artists, I'm still looking for like 30 like pictures of different parts of the thing just to add in there and uh, collaborate with so awesome any Star Wars fans um, but so in terms of writing that interests me but whilst I was doing that like you know, I could find myself writing a lot like I had a lot of experience doing assignments and things and and what have you so uh, yeah it's kind of something which is cool and intriguing but it's kind of a very lonesome uh, thing and doing the Kenobi thing like you in the mindset where you're focused on it but then you're sort of two in it and I don't think that's healthy uh, but what sort of books do you enjoy? Like, fictional, uh, I, this, I used to read Harry Potter uh, when I was younger, I really enjoyed those, Lord of the Rings as well. I wouldn't say I'm a massive great reader, like, I read uh, non-fictional books, and perhaps like, old train and sailing, books like locomotives, and that's the complete shadow uh, about me. Uh, so yeah, and I just love reading things about Star Wars. So I'm like always reading, but not books per se, purely because I don't really think I have enough time. Um, I'd rather just be filming something, I think, and coming up with my own ideas. Uh, so yeah, good question. Uh, K L N H. What is your dream travel destination in real life or fictional place? Well, because we've done real life, let's do a fictional place. Um, so I think that I would love to go to. Coruscant, Coruscant and Naboo I think there will be really cool places to experience um, so like all the city but then all the green luscious area on Naboo that would be awesome which is kind of like Italy in some parts um, Hogwarts as well love to go to Hogwarts uh, I'd love to go to Rohan Ministry at the Helm's Deep um, so yeah that would be pretty awesome maybe like Stephen Suter, what is your motivation to start weight training? What is your favorite body part to train? So, two questions. Uh, my motivation, I think, was probably my father when I was younger. And uh, and when I saw him training, I thought, well, I'd like to be fit. And then when I was watching movies, it kind of inspired me. Like, it may sound sad, but Batman was a great inspiration. My favorite body part to train. It's chest. It was always chest. Uh, 
Cougar and Blitz. Uh, which Star Wars faction would you want to join? Republic, Rebellion, Empire, CIS, etc. And which one do you like the most? It's a very tricky question. Because the Republic, excuse me, turns into the Empire and the Rebellion. Uh, there's always a struggle with the Rebellion, but you have X Wings and then Separatists, you have droids, and droid the cars and things. It'd be like Newt Gunray. The Viceroy. Um, I don't know. I think perhaps the Republic appeals to me, but also the Empire too. So I don't know. I don't think I could be as evil as the Empire. So, the Blade and Davis. Blad. Uh, are there any other TV shows or movies other than Star Wars that you're a big fan of? Yes, there are. Uh, Lord of the Rings is a phase which I go through, and I'd love the music on that. I have a channel called uh, something do a dine where I do the um, soundtracks and things and compilations. Um, so, all rings, but they're kind of like the generic big blockbuster, like Harry Potter a lot, and Pirates of the Caribbean, like I grew up with those. Uh, so I love them so much. So, Girls of Bungie, a great name. Uh, you seem like a very creative person. Is that something you've always enjoyed slash model building brackets model building sketching etc and would you ever consider doing a widget theme video i think you would make a fantastic gerald was that the same as the other one um may the force and tingles be with you well thank you very much um and also with you um but yeah i think i've always loved like creating artistic things but the realization maybe when I was a kid I enjoyed it but picked it up when I was older like I have a bit of a sad I think I enjoy like model ships railways and things um, and sketching is a hobby that I enjoyed quite a lot but I don't do it as much as I should but I just love creating it just makes me feel good so yeah Oaks where, whereabouts from the UK are you from? Where are oh, about? Are oh, you from in the UK? Um, I'm southeast, southern um, England. My phone keeps going on. Edward Hall. Hello there, Master Fred. I've seen on your Instagram pictures of costumes not used in your ASMR videos. These being knight's armor, and you as a blacksmith. I'm just wondering whether or not they were for future videos, or if you act slash model as a job. If so, how did you get into it? Congratulations, 500k herbal tea for us all. Love and support from Devon. Force Awakens, not when Fred's here. Uh, yeah, so thank you very much. That's uh, pretty awesome. Uh, very nice comment. Uh, yeah, so like I said, it was acting. Yeah, those pictures that you do occasionally come across are uh, pictures that I've been on, on, um, on my acting jobs on my Instagram. And um, so the Transformers one was where I was dressed up as a knight and like in full armor like the real stuff that was pretty awesome and the blacksmith one was a, a small job which I did um, for this for the history channel so that was pretty cool so yeah there are little things that crop up on there uh, from various jobs Harvey Walker how do you explain to your friends or family what you do <laughs> and do you think it's weird well, of course, the point where pretty much everyone knows. They told me, invariably, if I'm at a social gathering somewhere, uh, some invariably end up having to explain it to an audience. Some people get it, some people don't, but that's their choice. I just say I create videos, and if they know me, then they know me. Because I do all sorts of uh, videos, to be honest. Um, yeah, people probably think it's weird, but, like, say if some friends found it and say, oh, that's weird, but then... They just start thinking about explaining to them, and then I think, yeah, but then, you know, why would you tell me it's weird and things? I was like, oh, so you think it's weird? And I'm like, mm, no, not so much. I'm like, good. <laughs> like, why would you think that helping people and making people feel good and, and making fun videos is, is a bad thing? Like, that's not weird. Not to me, anyway. Uh, Bob Eagle, do you like football? If so, what team do you spot? Uh, if you're English, Bob, and you mean football? As in soccer, um, I don't. 
Good fortune of football was something I never got into purely because I don't like so much the culture which comes around with it. Uh, like when people are really passionate about something that like they won't like someone because they support that team. I don't understand that. And people could be really vocal about it uh, and aggressive for some reason. I don't know why. It's just like a sport. Um, but I enjoy cricket. But probably the only sport that I enjoy is like Formula One and always have. Uh, but I don't really watch sport that much. Uh, but I suppose if I supported a team of football, it'd be whatever team was me. Uh, Mixon. What are medichlorians? Well, medichlorians are microscopic life cells. And they reside in us, and within all living cells. And we are symbionts with them. They constantly commune with us, telling us the world of the force. When you learn to quiet your mind, Mixon, yes, you'll hear them speaking to you. Uh, Mr. Nothing, who's your favorite episode? What's your favorite episode from Star Wars? Mine is Return of the Jedi. Uh, mine is the Phantom Menace. Uh, like I love Return of the Jedi as well, and that's very close with Empire Strikes Back. Like I really enjoyed the Emperor in Return of the Jedi. Like how can the Emperor brings the Return of the Jedi to life? Uh, Electra, uh, where's your brother Loki? Doing mischievous things. Uh, Harry Boy, Minecraft fan. Uh, I never really understood Minecraft, but it's like a online lego building block thing maybe i don't know bill matter what is your favorite animated series Anim animes count um clone wars i love the clone wars edward hall i think we've had you before odd question but i was just wondering how tall are you i uh, said it earlier nicole burrow what do you find the inspiration where do you find the inspirations for your video ideas like my brain just works and just it's non-stop relentless um it could come to me literally any time in the day i always find like evening times or twilight evening times when ideas start to come like when i'm lying in bed so my bed next to me all the time and i'm just always writing down the ideas so i don't forget and then i'll work upon those ideas but maybe like when i'm watching films or something and there'd be something there i think hmm Hmm, a scene in real life, that, that's quite nice, smart me, it's smart. I'm going to use that and then sort of build upon it. What, Exion, the something, 10 them to 13th. Uh, Marty Van, watch his KFC video. Uh, he says more than once, he loves watching the prequels most weekends whilst eating. His chicken is like guilty pleasure. That is definitely me. Like, when I've got my KFC chicken and Star Wars Phantom Menace on and I'm like sitting there, I've got my bucket of chicken, Star Wars are ready to eat, it's just perfect, it's like replicating what I did when I was a kid, so yeah that's like my little secret thing which I really enjoy doing, very much my guilty pleasure. Uh, Sonder Breaker, congratulations Fred for your five. 100k subscribers thank you very much and thank you uh christian krennic director krennic congratulations imperial fred here's my question if you could have three superpowers plus one silly power with no practical use what would you choose i think any jedi ability but i think flying would probably be one of them super strength maybe and i'm not sure what the third one would be but if I was to have a silly one, it would be Force Lightning, like Emperor Palpatine. That would be sort of no use, but uh, uh, have fun. And cosplay, great cosplay. Okay. Um, Daniel W, Fred's voice, congrats. In my experience, there's no such thing as luck. Honestly, you have brought consistently great content to the ASMR community over the years and brought the standard level right up with your creativity and development skill. It's been amazing to watch you grow from the young whisper Fred to magnificent Fred's voice. I brought you thunderous applause. That's how Liberty dies. Do you remember the first real life ASMR experience? If so, please tell us a story. So, like I said, it was the Clark's one, which is probably my first real life experience. And number two was 
has number two has any of your videos giving you ASMR so not like when I'm watching um, I can't really give myself ASMR but maybe like when I'm editing there could be a sound that just goes I think you're surprised to be sure but a welcome one uh, keep up the great work and remember your focus determines your reality thank you quite on that one guy do you look up to anyone in the ASMR world here on YouTube uh, I don't think I look up to anyone I don't think, it's just, I've always been creative in how I think, and um, I'm just very respectful with it, what everyone does, and support everyone as much as I can, and I'm always happy, I think, to see people doing it, um, I don't think I'd look up to anyone, I don't think, <laughs> I just enjoy everyone's videos that uh, I'm subscribed to, and uh, congratulate everyone. Noah, Holly. Which of your videos do you consider to be the best? I think uh, the definition of best is down to you um, But I think the, the haircut ones are always very well received uh, Some of the rude ones, gaming ones uh, Likewise uh, Maybe the Bob Ross one. Oh, that was another one, the Bob Ross I really enjoyed cosplaying that He was cool um, A lot of happy little video greeting Dominic RG. Hello there, Fred. Congratulations on 500,000 subs. My first question is, how long does a typical ASMR video take to make? Planning included. Also, what is your favorite PS2 Star Wars game? Thanks, and cheerio. Great use of words. Um, yeah, so, I think I've answered that before. How long it takes. Very time, like a typical sound type video could be about four days uh, creating but that could be excluding or including props um, but complicated ones can take months or weeks or maybe weeks or months and my favorite PS2 Star Wars game I loved Battlefront but I had that on computer so it would be Star Wars Race of Revenge and I really enjoyed episode 3 a video game as well but Race of Revenge I loved and uh, Bounty Hunter um, yeah, but I've always had to think for pot racing. Uh, Diego uh, Hernandez, do you film all your videos at night? Uh, sometimes, I mean quite a lot, get filmed at night purely because there's less noise at night and less plane distractions and things. Um, but yeah, it's easier to film at night, not practical when you're a married man, I don't think. Uh, but my wife is very accommodating like that. She's very supportive of uh, my filming schedule. Okay, Ganga Gaming One. What is your favorite band slash music genre? So, like I said earlier, uh, Rattle Chip Peppers, Flight Concords, but music genre would be film, soundtrack music. As uh, Stevenson, how do you decide what videos you you'd like to make next? Uh, just whatever comes up in my brain. I can always try to keep the herd approach. Uh, so like switch between rude English gentleman and or a different role play and then just have complete opposite of just purely sounds. Like I like the variety because I think that works well for different tingles so you're able to enjoy different things at different times. Um, so that's why I was quite sporadic in different things that I make. Um, but yeah, how do you decide what videos you'd like to make next? It's just one I wrote, I think I'd enjoy it to relax to. Christian Smith, what kind of things do you like to do in your free time besides ASMR? Um, I don't think, like, I feel like I never have free time. Um, but I do enjoy going out eating junk food, uh, which is another guilty pleasure. Uh, there's a thing called in England. Um, called the National Trust, which I'm a member of, and I really like going to National Trust places like these old buildings with really nice walks and grounds, and, and I love walking um, and exploring those places, but also love going to the beach and walking on the sand and being near water and the sea and things, um, but I really enjoy going to the cinema too and watching films, so like all those things combined. Um, of my things. Uh, Elise Dow and gardening as well. Uh, what is your most important thing 
in your opinion, can be anything in the world or anyone. So the most important thing is, I feel like I should, the answer's there, but it's not there. But the most important thing in the world or anyone, the most important people is my wife and family. Um, and obviously you. Um, but the thing is, like, the most important thing is respect, I think, for people and understanding. I think that's probably what's important to me, maybe. Uh, Emily, how do you find the first ASMR and what inspired you to start doing it? So hopefully I've covered that for you, Emily. I think a couple of times. Uh, Zerg Dragoon, favorite EU character, favorite Jedi, favorite race. There's three questions there. Um, so yeah, I never really got into the EU that much, but I was kind of very disappointed still that Disney gave it the job, but that kind of like bring a lot of it in. But I loved the on PC, uh, Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy, that made you feel like a Jedi, and when you got that lightsaber, and it was so free, and you could do whatever you want, uh, that was the best. So I think Cole Katarn was probably my favorite, and his favorite quote was, it's offline. That was so frustrating, but I loved that game so much. It was brilliant. Um, so yeah, uh, my favorite race would be... Um, I don't know, I, I like gun guns. Um, but... I'm not sure what my favorite race would be. Like, Twilight. Twilight's a pretty cool, but... watching you since you had short hair. Oh, that was a long time ago. Congrats and thank you for all that you do. My question is, how long have you been married and how did you meet your wife? Um, how did you and your wife meet? All the best to both of you. Thank you very much. I mean, you can see more of my wife on Night Adventures where we like vlog together and stuff. And we've been married for two and a half years now. Um, and we met probably over four years ago. Uh, but where we met, Tyler Fox, what made, but she's helped out on videos and like you've seen it before. Tyler Fox, what made you want to do ASMR? Hopefully Tyler, that's been answers as well. Uh, discreet, discreet, do you work out? And if you do, what do you work on especially, specifically on what days? Uh, so back in my training days, like my last, before sort of the February time, it would be Monday legs, Tuesday chest, and then probably Thursday arms or something, and the rest days in between. So it was sort of just maintaining, sort of thing. Chest always going up, but everything else maintaining. Luke Hopman, uh, what got you into Star Wars? Well, I think my father is what you have to, who you have to thank uh, for that. Uh, he introduced it to me when I was a kid, and when we used to watch it, like I really enjoyed it. It was exciting and something new and opened my eyes to a load of things uh, but it inspired me in so many ways and so it was probably my dad uh, Alicia sure. uh, hey Fred love your love this video and the fierce attitude my question is what's your biggest pet peeve my biggest pet peeve I feel like there's one but I'm not sure what it is it's like I'd only know it if it happens uh, it could be something to do with driving, or, or my stomach's hungry, or, or it could be, I don't know, it could, it could be many things, but there's nothing particular, which I think is so annoying. Um, I don't know, pet peeve. Just, if someone does something wrong, um, and they're not meant to, then I think, hmm, why are you doing that? I don't know. Uh, Camo Bear. Favorite shampoo conditioner? <laughs> Not a great question. Uh, so I use Tresemme Biotin Repair uh, shampoo and conditioner. If you wanted to know. Next, have you ever considered to cut your hair, shave your beard, uh, cut your hair, or shave your beard and mustache? I love your actual style. Greetings from Peru. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, so many times I've thought about cutting my hair, shaving my beard. Sometimes I think. Well, I might do a Jack Sparrow or something and like trim there and trim there or something. Um, I kind of did it for a little while, but I don't think anyone noticed. It's just like a 
kind of cut off point there. Um, but then sometimes uh, I just think, well, I've always wanted a beard, and beard's my thing, I think, like just this sort of level. Um, so, yeah. But hair, uh, the only thing that I would love is just when you get out of the shower and whack a towel on it and your hair's dry. That's what I miss about short hair. But apart from that, uh, like, I like being different, I suppose, and like having long hair the most. So, Riley Gallivan, who or what is your biggest motivation in life? Uh, I think my biggest motivation is to do good and be known for doing good. Um, I think it's not like I have a specific thing, but there's many things I'm quite passionate about, like um, planting things and growing trees and um, yeah, and respecting nature and wildlife, wildlife and promoting it. Like if I had a, a say in things, then I would, if I had my way, then I'd be taking closer look on people who are ripping down forests and having no fishing zones to allow Fish, and fish to reproduce and coral reefs are looking into that as well. All the key elements of nature uh, to help nature and wildlife uh, and earth. Um, so yeah, I think David Attenborough is pretty, pretty awesome uh, to use as a motivator, but George Lucas as well. So, and John Williams. Uh, Arcadian hero, hero. I've spotted you in public twice now. I want to build up the courage to actually come and say hello there to you. Well, just if you say hello there, then you'll probably make my day. Um, but all I means to come up and say hello, like everyone always does. And uh, I'll be sure to shake your hand. And if you want to chat to me about ASMR, then feel free. Uh, I think I know when people know me and they don't want to say hello because there's a specific look. But uh, I don't think, you know, that might have been you. Um, but some people don't say hello, but you do whatever you're comfortable with. Um, so, but I imagine there's probably where I'm shopping somewhere, maybe. Um, I left it, seem to live at shopping centers and food courts, um, supermarkets. Uh, when someone says hi to me, my brain, don't say it. My mouth, don't say it. Deep inside, do it. Me, hello there. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Bugging Ryan. If Georgia were the one true Sith Lord, a lot of Jar Jar conspiracy. Um, what type of ASMR would you listen to? Also, how much planning goes into each of your videos? So, like I said, it's, it's varied. I like I would write down things and so I don't forget and things to put into videos. So that would be like the planning. But getting props and things takes time. And then filming, making sure you got the setup right. So, quite some time. Uh, for each video, um, but uh, if Jar Jar was listening to ASMR, uh, I feel like Jar Jar would listen to something sinister, um, but probably prefers like the ambience of Republic battle, feels somewhere listening to the gunshots and explosions and knowing that he caused, he manipulated the galaxy into doing that, and that brings him happiness and allows him to chill. Uh, so something along those lines, like distant explosions and, and troopers running around in droids and things. Sasha Clark, how do you feel about everybody saying you look like Thor? It's very nice for everybody to say that. Sometimes, like the other day when I just wanted chicken to eat, but they wanted to talk to me about Thor. And I'll just give me my chicken. I want my chicken. But apart from that, it's great. Uh, do you like dogs? I love dogs. Uh, Labradors are my favorite breed. Um, that's John Kloshner and also says all oh, cats. Uh, I like cats. I like big cats. Lions and tigers and leopards and jaguars. But um, I'm not a massive fan of smaller cats, you know. Um, don't want to be like Cat Lady Out Simpsons. Uh, Van Sun Zero Tim, how did you come up with the idea of doing ASMR? Sorry, bad English. Uh, your ASMR. English is very good, um, but my pronunciation of the name is bad. How do you come up with the idea of doing it as well? Uh, I think it just, it sort of evolved and the combination of making relaxing videos and then combining sounds and things to incorporate in it, uh, that sort of evolved over time. Uh, so yeah, uh, Shadow Girl, Girl is, 
when was the first time you watched Star Wars and when did you start loving it? Uh, that's no moon. That's a space station. Uh, so I started loving Star Wars. Like I said, um, after the Phantom Menace, that's when the obsession became. But uh, when I first started watching it, I was like six, seven maybe, on VHS. So the humble bee asks how long you've been married and how did you meet your wife? What does she think about your whole, your whole doing ASMR? Uh, well, I met my wife like two and a half years ago. Uh, two and a half? No, uh, four years ago. Um, been married for two and a half years. And uh, the whole ASMR thing, she's very supportive of ASMR. And she she gets, she doesn't experience ASMR, but she gets like all the good that it does. And uh, the creativity, and it's always like when we're out or something, she'll be like, oh, what about this for ASMR? Oh, what about this for video? What about this for video? That could be cool. So she's very much part of the uh, the creative process of it as well, which is really cool. Now, what's that doing? Okay, so that's not working in the right. Uh, Curtis Halson, which as is, would you like to work with in the future? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, as an artist, I don't know. It's uh, probably anyone to be honest. Um, I think it would work well with. Uh, two males, but then female could complement the other male-female thing, but for the rude English one it'd be cool to uh, collaborate with that and do a, a funny one with that. Or do you want someone rude and then someone not so rude? Uh, but just, there's so many candidates, shall we say. Cameron Haynes, can you do the live question and answers? I, this was going to be a live question and answers, but I still haven't uh, got the right things that I need to use my camera, the right setup that I want, background, and then I was thinking about maybe doing a questions and answers thing for that, but also uh, do a like role play or just a live a smart thing. That'd be cool. Maybe we'll have a STNG. Why did you start your channel? I think we've covered it. Uh, Astral Anime, how come that you're so gentle with everyone? Is that something you've always had? Uh, maybe, uh, like, that's not me for to, to decide again, like, uh, I think it's nice people, being nice to people, uh, that makes me happy, uh, there's no reason to say horrible things to someone or something like that, so, but that's my thing, uh, but thank you, Chris Bryson, what about the droid attack on the walkers? I don't know about it, but it's critical, we send the attack force there immediately. Uh, see first gamer Roblox and more. Uh, Fred, can you please put this in your video? Dad comes in and turns off the light. Dad, I'm trying to work. I'm trying to work. Turn it back on. Dad, I can't sound. I'm trying to be a lightsaber. <laughs> that was very good. I enjoyed that. Uh, good short. Uh, what do you think about the Jedi Fallen Order trailer? And are you thinking about getting the game? Thanks. Um, so for me, uh, like, I don't forget things, uh, and I enjoyed Battlefront 2, uh, but there's something about it, like the whole loot crate business, and the fact they were so help and EA was so help and um, uh, making money from, from gamers, and uh, being extortionate with it, and just that approach to it, I was a bit off about it, because that's not what Star Wars games should be like. Uh, so. When that happened, I was a bit, you know, wasn't so keen on it. And since then, it's kind of ruined it a little bit for me. Uh, Fallen Order, it looks good, but if I was going to do that, I don't get why they're doing all these sort of weird timeline things. I think Fallen Order would have worked if you're actually a Jedi during the Jedi Purge and you escape, begin with escape in the Jedi Temple and then go on your adventure to find the place where you're going to hide, basically, and you go to all these planets, and you interact with um, clone troopers, and then maybe droids as well, and maybe even, like, the beginnings of Empire-looking things as well, and where you're more settled in, that could have been awesome. So you could have begun with your Jedi robes and things, I would, would have loved that. But it's all like, all the Jedi just don't look like Jedi anymore for some reason, and that's a great shame. So I don't know if I'll be buying it, to be honest. Um, 
the original Gonkers was your taste in music film music because I'm really cool okay fake face how was your school experience uh, it was extremely enjoyable and a lot of fond memories of it uh, Austin Kirby hi Fred if you could journey to one Star Wars planet and rename it to what planet and what would you call your new planet uh, <laughs> it would have to be something maybe mysterious but something epic at the same time like I don't know maybe it, like a double barrel type thing but uh, the moon of Fred I don't know that's not very imaginative but something cool in Star Wars -y. but <laughs> unfortunately I can't answer that um, I'm sure there are many different variants but all means let me know any cool ones are probably one thousand and one do you have a script what do you speak for it and are you doing a test video before making the video which you want to upload so yes to both like I would write not a script per se but I'd write phrases that I specifically want to say so they'd be like half a dozen sentences or something which I want to say throughout certain points of the video so I'd memorize those things um, but there would be a general outline but that would kind of be in my head um, but the very basic general outline would be written down um, a test video some get tested uh, just to make sure that the look is what I want it to be but apart from that PP what are you more excited for Jedi Fallen Order or Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga the latter the second one that sounds awesome uh, Samuel De Plessis Darth Plagueis um, what is your workout routine we've covered it uh, Thoughts of Slayer 69. Out of all the things, why ASMR? Because ASMR is great. ASMR is good and uh, interesting and uh, encompasses everything. has a large, large scope for including other things in it. Uh, so that's really cool. Uh, survival hacks. Anime of Star Wars. Hmm. Ready uh, plays. Best answer so far. General Fred's voice, no be You are a Hunter Kelly, two questions. How did you get into it, Small? We don't know. Do you and your Mrs. Fred share the same enthusiasm for Star Wars? Uh, I would like to say that my wife does, but I'm afraid uh, she doesn't. And the most sacrilege thing is that she hadn't actually watched Star Wars before she met me. So obviously, I remedied that and changed a few things, and now she comes to celebration and all the Star Wars events uh, that we go to. Um, but yeah, I've talked to her about it all the time. Whether she wants to listen to me or not, I don't know. Uh, like, I'm the big super nerd, and she's like, okay. <laughs> Dark Lord Crunch, General Kenobi, Sly Guide Gaming. Which Star Wars movie is your favorite? Phantom is. Tan Tank Simus, uh, Fred's voice says, well, what is your favorite non Obi Wan Kenobi quote in Star Wars? Mm, very good question. <laughs> I think it would be something that Palpatine would say. It says, I mean, among, like if I'm sitting down, this is kind of like a random thing I do. Like I would just write out hello there in dust or something. If I'm out somewhere, I don't know why. But I invariably find myself, I'm doing it again, hello there. And then something that I would say when I'm walking around would be, if I'm in the hall, I'm like, do you ever hear the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? just say a quote like that or uh, um, the senate or something like that so probably Palpatine and those two uh, Dakota Dior hey Fred what's your favourite book slash series also do you read much in your free time by the way mine is Division I've had a Division um, reading I don't feel like I've got much time for reading and if I've got time so if I'm in a nice place I prefer to just like walk and see it with my eyes uh, I think my brain is too imaginative to um, to enjoy novel when I was younger. Yeah. Harry Potter, I loved Harry Potter. And reading that, those are brilliant books. Um, so, yeah. Burger Day, so what? So when Fred hits one million, he's going to become a Sith Lord. <laughs> if that uh, day ever comes around, uh, I would do it in a big Sith-like chair with a Sith cloak and make it a 
as Sith life as possible for all the Sith. <laughs> oh, Camo Clone 132. Are you excited for the Mandalorian and the newly announced Obi Wan Kenobi series? You're it's back. Uh, absolutely. Like, the Mandalorian, uh, it looks cool. I'm very intrigued to see where they go with it because obviously it's the first Star Wars like live action thing. And I'll be interested to see if the switch from movie to TV will work um, because I think they're not having so much luck with the movies at the moment. Um, but I hope the Mandalorian is interesting because the time after the Emperor and before and the First Order time doesn't really appeal to me, that transition. It's not exciting because it felt like it climaxed with Luke and Anakin and the Emperor. Um, but yeah, that'd be cool. I hear they're exploring the First Order type era in the Mandalorian, but there's Empire things still about. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi series, absolutely. At first I was slightly disappointed because I wanted it to be a movie and with like epic music, but then you really think about it, you get more Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan as a series, so I'm dead excited. Uh, William, the Fresh Dare comics, where did the whole movie this English gentleman thing start? Well, like I said earlier on, it's, uh, it's one of those things which I came up with. And I've answered that earlier. Uh, Aaron, Boo doing, Bay doing? Uh, are you a fan of Spaceballs? Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Is that like the game? I don't know. Uh, Kira Henry. Uh, favorite Clone Wars episode? The Star Wars novel. Uh, favorite Clone Wars episode? I love all these Star Wars questions, by the way. They're great. But the favorite Clone Wars episode, I think for me, is when Darth Maul is with Savage Press and he's on. Uh, what's the Death Watch planet called? And uh, yeah, and then Sidious walks in, and that, I was just fanboying so much because I couldn't believe what was happening. Like the Master and the Apprentice sort of clash, and uh, what happens there because more could effectively ruin everything, all the plans that uh, Palpatine has put in place. So that was really good. I thought it was like I'm watching a movie, and there's been some really cool episodes like that. There's so many good ones in the Clone Wars, like there are a lot of filler ones, but some really cool. Uh, Final Foster, favorite Star Wars character. Like I said, many. Bailey Brennan, have you have you read or listened to Thor trilogy Star Wars books? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, but maybe it's something I should. I enjoyed him in Rebels. A small weekly. General Freddy, you are a bold one. Now that is a brilliant question. Uh, I think if that is small weekly, if did a Han Solo role play, I think he did. I think it was really good. Uh, so check it out if you haven't seen it. But I could be wrong. It might not be a small weekly, but uh, yeah, it was cool. Uh, yes. Could you describe what an alternative yes, my universe world looks, sound, feel like to you? It could be a whole other dimension, no rules, reality, or physics. That's really cool. So for me, the ASMR would be like instead of watching your computer, it'd be like this immersive thing where. Uh, you sort of plug a hologram thing on the ceiling and on the floor and then it projects like the hologram of the ASMR. Maybe it can like induce smells of things but not feeling because that's kind of like, I watched a couple of episodes of Black Mirror and I really didn't like it. It does not make me feel good afterwards. Um, very thought provoking I suppose, but none of that plug in your head thing would mess you up. Um, it would be a hologram thing so you see it and it will work in front of you and you could like use a hologram whenever so it'd be life size and everything or whatever size you want it to be so it could be like on your phone and it could be that big or be life size in front of you and you could sit there uh, that'd be cool so like leaning in it could be almost like leaning in around you that'd be awesome uh, your favorite star wars film uh Federico, would you like to talk about your workout routine i'd love to hear about that I think I have. And two, in video games in general, what type of character you choose like the most? Uh, the tank warrior, heavy, the stealthy sniper, or warlock, mystical? Anyways, greetings from Italy. You're my favorite ASMR artist. Thank you very much. Um, so I think it varies for different games like World War II games, uh, machine gun, assault, but also uh, snipering. I'll be doing a lot of snipering if I'm playing, if I used to play 
with uh, someone then I'd be the sniper and, um, but yeah in the Star Wars games probably a sword you know, the quickest one uh, to get into the battle but say if it's Lord of Rings game then it'd be the mystical uh, so yeah it, it sort of varies um, but in Star Wars if there's a Jedi option then it's always the Jedi um, Jayhawk what what job were you going to do before you knew about YouTube uh, that's a very good question uh, I feel like uh, when I was younger that I could have taken a different great path and probably approached like media studies uh, or, or something to do with filming um, film studies and, and maybe acting as well all those things if I knew then would be very beneficial to now that's for sure like a lot of things you could learn um, but also I feel like uh, I would call in maybe acting something maybe some sort of filmmaking technical things. Uh, editing appeals to me uh, very much so. Um, I'll do a lot of editing for Star Wars um, type videos and what have you. Um, and I think maybe probably working in a museum somewhere doing talks or something. Um, Lucian Conley, please do more Star Wars Imperial ASMR. They probably will because viewers who want it but no records come here ASMR. Yes, I've got the question now. And the premise has been set. The pieces are now moving. Crystal Critter. Um, Just in Reynolds. And what kind of bottled water do you drink? I'm not a potent spring kind of girl, but more an Evian or Volvic. Very posh. Uh, and Coke or Pepsi, which do your taste buds prefer? So, like Pepsi? Probably for the fizz. And fizz really ticks the spot like a one sip and I'm good. Uh, Evian I used to have, but Highland Springs as well, but I think just from the supermarket, uh, just their own big bottle of water, I drink it and then I fill up in my car and my car drinks it too. Uh, Chris, are you allergic to anything? Do you have any piercings? No, I don't have any piercings. I don't think I'm allergic to anything. Do your friends and family watch your videos? <laughs> Maybe. Do you do your own editing? Yes. Why am I a desert? lot of questions in it and if you had your own personal death star which planet would you off who shot first Han shot first uh, if I'm in death star I'd probably be like in Star Wars well it's probably a slave of a planet um, and save all the people from all the slaves and, uh, and then blow up the planet that's <laughs> that escalated quickly that got a oh. okay Mr. G JTR metal smells like metal it's most odd. It is quite odd. Ziggy Ashton, high ground, always the high ground. Go the highest, but not too high, because Fred doesn't like heights. Nightbot, General Kenobi, Common King. What did you feel when you hit 500,000? Uh, great feelings when I saw it in, in the morning. I looked in and, and saw it. It was, I was over the moon and happy. And then my wife wait, made a massive cookie thing, which is on my Instagram. And uh, on the start of that picture, which you've seen as well, from all of you, and the card as well. So thank you. And it's just to me, it's like just shows like how widespread and maybe my videos have gone in different areas, and uh, that's really nice and touching. And it's a very great feeling. Uh, T Bone Music. Why did you start ASMR? What's your favorite channel? Uh, my favorite channel. Uh, like I don't think I have a favorite because. If I'm subscribed to a channel, then I probably uh, watch the video and I enjoy all the videos, like because they're also different and unique. Someone like this could be someone who's got great quality, or someone who's like just using their phone or something, and it, it doesn't. There's no differentiation between the two. They, they can work uh, and both be as good as each other. So uh, yeah, so everyone, I like everyone. Okay. Creepy. Look. Uh, Rick and Dorky, what do you find most enjoyable about Battlefront games? Come and old. The old games, I love that um, you used to be able to just take off in a ship and land it wherever you want. Like, even on the Star Destroyer, it was that freedom thing, which I love. And that just says a lot about the game then. Like, the games now, you can't do any of that. And it just shows, like, how much of their 
fingers and the control that you're trying to implement in your game experience. And yeah, I think I love the fact that you could pick the own, your own players that you wanted to um, play in Battlefront, but now if you get it's like a choice to put you in the best server so you can get a good planet like Naboo or something, or a crappy one like uh, uh, what's the one in Han Solo film? That one and Crate or something. The Crate was alright to play in Battlefront, but um, yeah, I don't like that random selection because sometimes you're in the mood for playing a certain map, and sometimes you're not. But invariably for me, it's uh, Duel of the Fates in the Boo Hangar. That's awesome. I love it. Uh, so yeah. But I really wish that you could just get into a ship, fly, park it, and then go and do your thing. And if you don't return to your ship in a certain amount of time, then it blows up and respawn somewhere else. That works, that was great fun. And then fly into space, from ground, that was good. And ship to ship combat, and in hangars, that was cool. Not this weird system they've got now where you kind of get in the ship, but you're not in control. Like, that's the whole fun if flying into the ship, and if you manage to land the troops in there. Uh, it felt like a battle with the old Battlefront games. Uh, but anyway, uh, Oliver Sap, obviously Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, do you like the current state of Star Wars Battlefront 2 right now? Like with the new updates and hero changes? Like, I like that they've not Battlefront talking. I like that they've added like General Kenobi and all the prequel stuff. I want more prequel things, uh, less sequel stuff, um, and make it more like Star Wars. It's just basically what I said. I'd love to see the Jedi Temple purge or a on the map. Uh, that would be pretty awesome. And like I like the Geonosis map, but like it's more flat. I remember the old Battlefront game it was like really flat, and all the games feel like I know you've got like dodge and dark and hide in places, but it's convoluted with stuff. I want there to be like a really open playing battlefield, kind of like the Great One. I think that's great fun because like you could just fly around, people could be walking in. Fred, do you prefer the old Star Wars movies, Phantom Menace, Tango Concentra, or the present day ones? Hopefully that's been answered for you. It's kind of a no-brainer. And finally, uh, if you could pick two superpowers, what would it be? Or superpower things? So like I said, flying, maybe the ability to heal as well, actually. I think that would be really cool. To heal anything that's cool, but then you wouldn't want to be trying to take the job from someone. But yeah, so people get better, that'd be nice. So I think that's what my iPad is telling me. There's the comments there. So this has been an exceptionally long video. So you're either fast asleep through it or still listening, which is a bit crazy. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed it. And there's questions in there which are answered for you. And it's been enjoyable. And you've maybe even found out something which maybe you wanted to know. And it's been answered for you. So thank you everyone who sent your questions. Thank you again for the uh, milestone of 500,000 subscribers. Like it was completely over the moon and well, well welcomed. Um, it just really means the world. So I hope that you know that. And it's not known for me. It's for you too. Like it's for both of us. Get it? Uh, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this. This has been very long. I know. Um, but yeah. Take care of yourself. Sure. Sure.